Some of you have been hurt by Phaser. You were young, maybe you were old, maybe you are where you are right now, and Phaser let you down. Maybe you got burned out on Phaser. Maybe you misunderstood Phaser. Today, I'm gonna metaphorically take your hand and lead you towards how you can use Phaser. Let's take the journey together. That's deep. It is deep. There's literally a control called deep on some phasers. In the 1970s, there was one guitar effect that ruled them all, and it was the phaser. But unfortunately, it was just a phase. Everybody see, see the ah! shirt? It's just a phase shirt, available again. Click the link in the description below to order. Yay! It's a really important effect, and basically it gets started when synthesizer genius guru Tom Oberheim creates the phaser, and it's turned into this thing. It like goes up on a mic stand. It has three paddle rocker knobs. You hear this on a lot of classic recordings in the very early 70s. Then you have Keith Barr who takes his own approach at phasing and creates the phase 90 around 1974. And from this point on, phase is unstoppable. It's on every stinking record. Everybody wants one. And companies even started their entire existence building phasers like DOD with their electronic phaser. Phaser's really big, and then it kind of disappears, and then it reappears slightly and disappears again. All that said, it's time to get back into Phaser. Let me show you how to use it. This first jam, I'm gonna go for a country thing. I am from the country, but I can't really play country. I can I can fake some stuff, and then I can get off into jazz land, like jam band land. So let's do this. Paul McCartney and the Beatles, they keep going. Jerry Garcia joins them on a world tour and uh, they got a feeling. That's all I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna use the three series compressor. I'm gonna push it so it breaks up the amp a little bit. The three series compressor is based around the classic gray Ross or you know, the old school Dynacomp. And then on the phase sound, I'm gonna go for like a mid slow thing, which I'm gonna do a few of these today because it's my favorite phase sounds and I don't think people use it enough. But blend, halfway, rate, not quite halfway, width, pretty wide, and then feedback down. We're gonna combine these and I'm gonna play this Upeg guitar. This thing is beautiful, handcrafted and made in Japan. This is the Trell Breaker. It's kind of incredible. It's got like the two pickups here and then you can phase those however you want. And then there's a toggle to turn on the middle. It's beautiful. I love it. It's an offset that Ryan Burke doesn't have, so that's kind of like a sick stab at him. Sick burn. Sorry, Ryan. John Mayer, if you're watching this, you better watch out. There might be room for me and Dead and Company. <laughs> Let's move on. This next jam is for Nick. I'm going to replicate the tonal palette of Kevin, who is Tame Impala. That's Nick's favorite artist. You okay with that, Nick? Yes! Yeah, I'm sure you're okay with that. We're just gonna see if we can pull off that sound. I'm gonna set a DM2 Waza up at like a pretty hard high effect mix slap. And then we're gonna use the compressor as well so that we squish the front of it. 
most all the Tame Impala stuff is that way. Then on the phaser, I'm gonna speed it up a bit. I'm gonna keep the feedback position down wide again, and then I'm gonna turn the blend up even more. And I'm really just doing this to see if Nick can do this intro drum fill that's off the record, because I don't think he can. I can. We'll see. That was fun, and Nick nailed the drum fill. It's almost like he yes. practices or something. I did turn the phase effect up a little more because in the recordings, it's perfect, right? It's It fits the record, but I wanted you to hear it in the context. So I bumped it up a little bit. So if you're a purist out there ripping me apart in the comments, uh, I'm aware of what I did, so get off my back. Let's go to the next jam. This next jam, I'm gonna go way back to the 60s. And there's two people in particular that used phasing type effects in that era. And they were primarily the Univibe because things like this did not exist. It was Jimi Hendrix and then David Gilmour on Plink, Plink Floyd. David Gilmour on Pink Floyd record. So let's jump to Dark Side of the Moon era and he uses the phasing sound in a very slow way. It's pretty much the same exact settings uh, that we used on the Tame Impala thing, just a little bit slower. I'm gonna jam on that. And the idea here is that this is Dark Side of the Moon, but somehow like 70s Santana slips in to like help out with the guitar solo. But I am gonna use a fuzz face style pedal uh, this is the smiling because that's from that era with David Gilmore. It's kind of like it is David Gilmore playing the solo, but he's he's like Santana's in the room staring at him. And so like that there's that energy, right? It's like an energy and you're like, oh, I, I got to do like a Santana thing for a second. You get the idea. This is that sound, the pre phaser phaser sound of the Univibe, like a unicorn or like an actual Univibe. And just picture Santana sitting there. That's important. This next jam, I'm going to, against my better judgment, attempt some kind of Van Halen-esque atmosphere. You know, like I'm not a Van Halen player. I keep putting myself into these positions lately on the show where I play stuff that I, I don't really know how to play, but I can fake it. They say fake it till you make it, so I hope I'm about to make it. And right now we're making a riff with the angry Charlie. <laughs> set to this cranked brown sound Marshall thing. 
and then I'm gonna have the phaser set up a little bit slower, less width, less blend, and I think it kind of approximates that use of Eddie Van Halen's phase 90. And you know, maybe this is like ZZ Tops involved. And at the end, I'm gonna try my best, I, I'll try some two hand tapping. I haven't done that. I just turned 40 and I remember trying to learn eruption when I was 17. So like, let's see, let's see how that goes. Let's do this. Are you ready? Yeah. We're not gonna sound at all like Van Halen because it's not physically possible. I hope this episode has helped you see Phaser in a new way and maybe be inspired to try it out. You know, you need to give it a chance. I just want you to try Phaser. You need to enter this new phase of your life and try the Phaser. Huh? Let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 2011's Inner Speaker by Nick's favorite band, Tame Impala. Uh, Side B, Solitude is Bliss. You might want to listen to that. It'll sound familiar. This album is... It's not my favorite Tame Impala, but it has a few of my favorite songs. And this is the record where I realized Tame Impala, I think, is what the Beatles would have ended up sounding like. You can love or hate that comment, but you should check out the record. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know what your favorite Tame Impala record is. And if you're not familiar with this stuff, um, you need to be, because it's incredible. I think he plays, does he play everything on this? Yeah, so he, like, a lot of people, <laughs> it's like a misconception, like, Tim Powell is like, he has a band, but like, Kevin does everything. There's like a moniker, and then he tours with a band. Yeah. He plays everything, it's incredible. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. In the comments below, let me know your favorite jam. Let me know your favorite phaser. Let me know your favorite song with phaser. I know we're not in record time anymore, but this can be a second record time where you recommend your favorite phaser track. That way other viewers can go in, listen to those and get further inspiration on how to add a phaser into their rig. Hit like if you like this episode, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Also in the description below, you can jam with every one of these amazing phaser jams at BandLab. Have a wonderful day and uh, bye, go play guitar. <laughs>